Welcome to lesson 4 of the Python video tutorial series. In this lesson, you will learn how to make your program request, accept and store user input, and you will learn how to convert this input into different data types. Let's look at the input function now. The input function is simply the word input with an open bracket and close bracket at the end. However, this command on its own does very little, unless you simply want to have a feature where you press enter to continue your program. Normally, we need to store the user input, so a typical command looks like this, name equals input. This will store the input in the variable name. But there's a problem. If we run this, you'll see that there's a flashing cursor, which is a waiting input, but there's nothing to prompt the user that this is the case. We can solve this problem in either of two ways. In method one, we can add an output statement on a new line which outputs the string, hello, what is your name? When I run this, the output statement will be on the first line with the flashing cursor awaiting input on the second line. I will quickly add another output statement to show you that the data has been stored and can be recalled. This time, when I run the program and enter my name, an output is generated saying, Hello Graham, it is nice to meet you. Now we will examine the second method of requesting user input. I will take the string from the output statement and paste it between the brackets of the input statement. I will quickly tidy up the code by deleting the output statement entirely. I will also add one extra space between the question mark and the closed speech mark. I will run the code and explain this step. As you can see, the string is output on one line and the cursor is flashing at the end of that line awaiting input. The extra space I added to the string separates my input from my string, making it look nicer. In this example, I have a variable called num1 and an input prompting the user to enter a number. I also have an output statement which will display what I enter. When I run the code and type the number 4, the output is also 4, so all looks good. Now, let me modify the code so that the program asks for two numbers and outputs the calculation of number 1 plus number 2. Now, when I run the code, you will see there is a problem. The output is 44, and this is not correct. This has happened because input statements store data as strings. When you try to add two strings together, it concatenates them, which means it joins the two strings together. To convert an input into a different statement, we require the use of two further functions. The function int open bracket close bracket converts an input into an integer whereas the float function converts it into a decimal. The entire input statement needs to sit inside the brackets of these functions for the conversion to take place, as you can see here. Now when we run the program and enter the values 4 and 4 again, we now get 8 as our output, which is correct. Now for a couple of challenges. Challenge 1 wants you to create a program which will prompt the user to input three numbers. The program outputs the sum of these. An example of the output is shown here. Challenge 2 wants you to create a program that allows the user to enter three heights in meters and centimeters and to work out the average height. Again, the example output is shown. Pause the video now and attempt these challenges before progressing to the solutions. Good luck. Here is the solution for challenge 1. See if you got it right. Pause now. And here is the solution for challenge 2. Thank you for watching this video. Join me again in the next video where we will examine if statements.